Coming up after the news on the BBC World Service, it's Hard Talk with me, Stephen Sacker. The rise and fall of my guest today says much about the turbulent nature of Pakistani politics. Ishak Dar has long been seen as a loyal servant of one of the dominant figures in Pakistan's recent political history, Nawaz Sharif, three-time prime minister and leader of the most powerful faction of the Muslim League. In his last administration, Sharif made Ishak Dar his finance minister, and together they claim to be setting Pakistan on a sounder economic footing, forging better relations with the IMF, improving the public finances, and creating a more business-friendly environment. But they were also, according to Pakistan's anti-corruption agency, the National Accountability Bureau, enriching themselves at the public's expense. So, even before Imran Khan was elected into office in 2018, both men had come under intense investigative scrutiny, and ultimately, both ended up heading into exile in the UK. Now, such is the febrile nature of Pakistani politics that Nawaz Sharif is now using his London base as a launch pad for a political campaign against Imran Khan's premiership. Both he and Ishak Dar claim the graft allegations that they faced are nothing but political smears. But given their past, how much credibility do they have as leading critics of the current government? Well, Ishak Dar joins me now. Welcome to Hard Talk. Thank you for inviting me. Let us begin with your personal status, your legal status. Sure. You are a wanted man in Pakistan. Are you here in London to escape the judicial process? Well, not, not really. I think uh, you must be aware of the Pakistan history, that whenever in Pakistan over a period of 73 years, the corruption rhetoric has been used in the last uh, few dictatorships. And the current one isn't different because this regime is known to be under a covert or a judicial martial law. So I, I can prove uh, that there is nothing against me and I have all the evidence. Uh, I hope that you know that the prime allegation against me, my name was not in Panama paper. Let, let, let me judgment. stop you, because some people will not be following this uh, in great detail. Sure. You're saying <laughs> your name was not in the Panama papers. Nonetheless, sure. we learned an awful lot from those Panama papers published in 2016 about sure. monies being stashed away in foreign bank accounts, and it involves some very top-level Pakistanis. And there was reason to believe that not just Nawaz Sharif's family was involved, but your family too. No. There, there isn't any mention of my family well, at I'm all. not saying there was a specific mention of your family, but the <laughs> but National Accountability Bureau decided after the publication of the Panama Papers to look very closely at yours and your family's interests, assets and accounts. Most welcome. And they found that there were grave no. uh, problems. Not at all. Because you see, I'm sure that uh, you would be privy that it was the Supreme Court direction which set up a joint investigation team and there were two military intelligence members who are virtually governing out of the six members of the JIT. So you see there's a background. Well, I, I, I'm actually interested in, in what's known in Pakistan as the National Accountability Bureau, yeah, which, which is, is the main agency of anti-corruption. Yeah, and it, they look very carefully at you and your family's interests, as you well know. And in September 2017, they concluded that you and your family owned assets, quote, beyond your known sources of income. They said quite specifically, <clears> the <throat> accused, that is you, has acquired assets and pecuniary interests, resources in his own name and the name of dependents, are totaling uh, roughly six million US dollars, more than 830 million Pakistani rupees. Now, is it your contention that the National Accountability Bureau has no integrity? It has lost its integrity a long time back. It is uh, at, you know, an institution which is used uh, against political opponents. But you didn't say that with respect, sir, when you were a, a very senior serving government minister. No, I did. You see the prime allegation against me which was in the JIT report, was that I did not file 20 years tax returns in Pakistan, 1981 to 2001. A UK qualified chartered accountant, never missed uh, reporting his tax matters in UK when he was here, uh, till 1976, and then in the North America, two years, and in Pakistan since 70, I never missed any tax return. So this is such a, 
uh, you know, blatant allegation. Is it? Well, in that case, let, let's be very open and transparent yeah. with each other. I've interviewed many government officials and ministers around the world over many years, and sure. they always say, oh, I'm not responsible for any corruption at all, and I believe in transparency. I do. You do. Oh, so yes, of course. So how many properties do you and your family own? It's all declared in my, in, in my, uh, in my tax returns. Well, well, you see, just this, give me the answer, because I don't uh, know. I, How many properties do you I, and your family I have, own? I have uh, my main residence uh, in Pakistan, which has been taken over by, uh, you know, by this uh, regime. Uh, you know, so I, have, I haven't got too many properties. But how every, many properties do you and your family I, my, own? My net worth is the, what, what has no, been no, reported. How many properties do you and your family own? One. One, my one sole property. You and your family own yes, one property. My sole residence. So all of these stories in the Pakistani press about multiple properties owned by your family mm. inside Pakistan, property <clears> interests <throat> overseas, including in Dubai, well, wherever, and we're but, sitting uh, in London. But, uh, what, we're what, sitting what, in London. You not own nothing in London. No, no your family, not the, just you, your family. No, not at all. Own nothing. No, because the, and you Dubai, see, the, the government. Dubai. My my sons have just one villa, which is which is owned by them. They're in business for the last seventeen years. So when I asked you how many properties you and your family own and you said one that wasn't that strictly is, true no the, the, no it is strictly true because they're adult they're married the 17 years they're in business so they're independent of me you you know they, very they, well that when the NAB looked at your assets they were looking at you and your family I have no issue I have no issue. My family, everything is accounted for. That's exactly you see. see. If, if all of this is so clear cut, you only own one property in the entire world. Your tax records have been kept and given to the authorities over the yeah. last yeah. 20 years. If everything this... is so crystal clear, yeah. why do you not go to Pakistan and make this case in a court of law? Well, the court of law, you know, we, you know my lawyers were there. I, I'm here for medical treatment, a cervical issue. Do, do We've we, been here for what best yeah, part of three years on yeah, this medical issue. Almost yes, I am. Are, are you still really suffering? Yes, I am. I, I'm, I'm, and, and you couldn't possibly get back to Pakistan. Well, let's see what's what's happening in Pakistan. What where are the human rights? What's happening in NAP custody? Where people have, have dozens of people have, have been killed. But sorry, you, you're you, saying that the people human being investigated abuses. by the NAB, the National Accountability Bureau, have been killed. <laughs> In the NAP custody, many people have died. Yes, uh, I mean it's an open secret. You just you Google and you would you would have all the detail. I can I can leave detail with you if you want to. You see this 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 institution has been politically used against opponents. As I said, that I never missed a return, and mm. my tax return is not missing. Mm. So it is totally accounted for. So what is the issue? The issue is issue is something different. Because Mr. Sharif was fighting for the civil supremacy, and I have always been fighting for the for the financial and fiscal discipline and transparency. Right. So you, well, you, you, you introduced the name Mr. Sharif. So I think we need to talk about Mr. Sharif as well as yourself, because Nawaz Sharif is also in London, also on medical grounds. He unlike, man, man, manhandled by the NAB. Well, in his custody, he manhandled. You say yeah. the truth is Nawaz Sharif is a convicted criminal. Well, uh, I hope you know that both cases in which he has been convicted. Both case, in both uh, judgments, it has been written that the prosecution has not been able to prove any corruption, well, any kickback, any uh, loss to the exchequer. So what else we want? I, 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 I'm sorry, sir, but it is quite clear that he is a convicted criminal. And again, the Accountability Court, which works alongside the National Accountability Bureau, found against Mr. Sharif. I believe he was given a 10-year sentence and that was reduced ultimately to seven years. He was then allowed to come to London on medical grounds, the same medical grounds that you brought you to London too. So here the two of you <laughs> sit. And now you and he, you of course used to be his finance minister sure. in the Pakistan government, you and he put yourselves forward as leading voices in the opposition in Pakistan demanding early elections and an end to Imran Khan's government. And I ask you, what credibility do you think you have with the Pakistani people? I think people? what credibility Imran Khan government has. The world has witnessed that it was a stolen election. It was a rigged election. It's not we we are saying. We have experienced pre-poll 2018 surveys indicate the PMLN will win. But uh, the observers, the Human Rights Commission of Pakistan, the dirtiest election. Everybody knows the election has been uh, stolen uh, from us. So uh, I think well, we have every respect, right. I just look back at the yeah. EU monitors report on yeah. that election. Yeah. They reported some grave concerns about abuses in specific places, sure. not involving just one party, but sure. several different sure. parties. Sure. But the final and ultimate conclusion was that they believed the result was credible. 
that Imran Khan's election victory in 2018 was credible. That was the conclusion of but the EU report. Then you haven't read the, all the reports. The human rights, you know, well, you, you, can of cherry pick, you can cherry pick the most negative. It, I'm telling you that the EU monitors, the, highly it, respected, it, independent it, monitors, looked the, at everything what, that what happened about, in Pakistan, the, the, and they concluded that Imran Khan's victory was credible. No, free and fair election network, uh, which is the global one. What do they report? I don't they, believe that there's ever been an election in Pakistan without some abuses where every single this, thing was conducted with freedom and integrity. The, that doesn't work in Pakistan. The, the, the you, truth is Imran Khan has a democratic mandate. He's been Mr. in power for two years and you are now Mr. saying to the Pakistani Mr. people he must be removed from Mr. office. Mr. Sarkar, this election has been stolen. It was a rigged election. There was a pre-poll rigging. During the day, the results transmission system was, was choked off and was, was put off of hours. Our polling agents were ex expelled from the poll. I mean, Fafin has reported 35 seats were rigged and stolen. Otherwise, he would have never been uh, in government. Well, your party <laughs> chooses to say that. Go through. What, what did he say before this uh, last sentence? Well, of course, <laughs> yes. his conclusion is the most important thing. I think you'd agree. No, no. Well, well conclusion. maybe you wouldn't. Okay, yeah. let's move on. Let's talk <laughs> about what your tactics are now. Because as I've said, you and Nawaz Sharif are sending your video links back into Pakistan, sure. sometimes to thousands of people, hmm. demanding an early end to the Imran Khan government. And this is what, just a month ago, Nawaz Sharif said to thousands of people in Punjab. He said that the integrity of the army chief, General Kamar Javed Bajwa, had disappeared. He said that the general was responsible for levering him out of office and rigging 2018, as you've said. Quote, this is what uh, Nawaz Sharif said to the general, the chief of the army. He said, you packed up our government and you, you uh, put the nation at the altar of your own wishes. You rejected the people's choice in elections and installed an inefficient, incapable group leading to economic catastrophe. What an extraordinary thing to say of oh, a, your country's it, chief of army. It's a reality. The, the buck st stops at the top. And the deep state is known uh, what deep state does in Pakistan. I mean, is, is, is it a surprise to you, Mr. Sekhar? It is known to the world. So please, you must be fair to analyze things. The election was stolen. Mr. Sharif has been struggling for the supremacy of democracy, for the supremacy of parliament, and I have been struggling for the fiscal and, and uh, discipline and the transparency. Is it wrong? I mean, UK has been upholding the democracy and the democratic values. We would think that you would be supporting us. So let us be clear. You yeah. are saying that the Pakistani military, the army in particular, are subverting all democratic processes in your country. Is that what well, you're this, this is the global report. I mean, it's not... We... No, no, I want to be clear what you're saying. But, but I, I, because I, the Pakistani people I, will be listening to this interview and you are I, condemning the military of your own country man, as I, subverting your it's democracy. Not, it's not the military. I think we have, to, we have to talk about the individuals. It's not all the entire institution. I think let's, be, let's create a difference. Is the wish list is the plan of certain people who, who, who enforce in Pakistan so, martial law. So you're it's saying the army is led by General Bajwa, who, in yours uh, and Nawaz Sharif's opinion, is entirely subverting democracy. Is that what you're saying? Well, let, let's re-articulate. What, what we are saying that if the elections were rigged and uh, uh, you know, somebody has been planned. It's not we. It is the Interior Minister of Pakistan gave a statement that if Mr. Sharif had not got problem with the deep state and the institutions, he would have been fourth time prime minister. Why, did, why would he say it? So the, it let me be clear. You're now alleging that this is entirely unacceptable when your erstwhile boss and your very close ally, no, yeah. ally Nawaz Sharif, was working hand in glove with Pakistan's military dictator, General Zia, for many years. And suddenly he's decided that the military and the way they interfere in politics in Pakistan is entirely unacceptable. What kind of hypocrisy is that? No, I, 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 just, I just believe, uh, uh, you know, this analysis, frankly speaking, I disagree with you. Well, well what uh, bit of what I've just said is wrong? Maybe evolution process. Maybe evolution process. Evolution process? Yes, yeah, because you know he... Oh, you mean because then he was in power and now he's out of power, so he's really it, it, angry it, with the army because well, they well, won't it's, work it's, with him. No, it's, it's, not, it's, not the, it's, the, it's not the first time. It's the third time he was prime minister. And Imran Khan, own interior minister, tells the whole world that Mr. Sharif would have been fourth time prime minister if he had not 
uh, got trouble with the uh, with the uh, you know the establishment. You see, Imran Khan may be unpopular in Pakistan now, but when he heard what Nawaz Sharif said last month at that rally, when he directly targeted the chief of army, Imran Khan said this. He said, "How dare Nawaz Sharif point to the general and blame him for what is happening in Pakistan when for years?" Mr. Nawaz Sharif polished the boots of a former military dictator. When Imran Khan said that, I dare say he actually had a great deal of sympathy from many Pakistanis who know hypocrisy when they see it. Uh, I, I think you probably haven't seen his 21 clips, how he has been maligning the military, the military army chief, the intelligence services of Pakistan. Uh, last year, when he was in the United States, he gave a statement that it is the ISI, the you know the our intelligence service, uh, which actually was responsible for the Osama bin Laden. So I think when he was out of power, when he was in opposition, he had uh, given 21 different statements at different times. He was known as Taliban Khan. I mean, I, I don't know. What, are we talking or wish to discuss his performance and our performance? Are we here to talk whether it is a pure democracy or is a anocracy? You and other opposition elements have created this Pakistan democratic movement. You want to deliver early elections and see Imran booted out of power. But many people, even in your own movement, are now backing away from this targeting of the Pakistani military. For example, Bilawal Bhutto said it was regrettable that Nawaz Sharif had named the military chief by name and even Mr. Sharif's own daughter, Mariam, had to stress at great length that she was not anti-military. It sounds like Nawaz yeah, the, Sharif has overstepped you see, the it, mark. I think there's, there seems to be a confusion. Mr. Nawaz Sharif as Prime Minister or otherwise is not anti-military. Please, let's be very clear. He blames certain individuals and as I said, the puck, you know, stops at the, at the top. If the dawn leaks were there. There's a huge, uh, you know, history on, uh, about that. I'm, I'm sure you will be privy to, to dawn leaks. It's, it relates to Fatif. It relates to Pakistan going back to Gray, which we brought out from Gray. So I think, you know, if Mr. Sharif talks of certain interventions which are against the oath, against the constitution of Pakistan, is it is something wrong? I let's, think let's talk. Uh, let's talk about politics and your message to your own people. We know that Pakistani people are suffering right now. Food this, price inflation is soaring. COVID-19 is seeing a second surge in your country, sure. creating real economic difficulties. There's going to be barely any growth in the Pakistan economy this year. In the midst of all of that, you are creating a new level of political instability, demanding that Imran call early elections, calling him illegitimate, banging on about the vote rigging, claiming that the army is really in power. Do you think that your approach is really helping the interests of the Pakistani people. I think you have to be neutral empire, Mr. Sekhar, for a moment. 2014, we, we won the election 2013, massive majority, two third almost. 2014, when Mr. Imran Khan comes uh, to agitate for four constituencies rigged only, his claim, nobody spoke. Yeah, and he was, Mr. Dar, you, you, yeah, you're I'm, going I'm, back I'm, now, no, you're no, going I'm back six going, years, I, okay, and I'm, I'm putting myself in okay, the shoes of a Pakistani okay, today okay, who sees I, rising okay, food prices, let, okay, political let, instability, let, geopolitical let, instability, good and he wonders okay, whether the opposition okay, sitting in fair, London, fair, yourself fair and Mr. Nawaz enough. Sharif, really have the interests of ordinary Pakistani people at heart. Yeah, we have interests of Pakistani people at heart, and that's where we are moving. This country had witnessed double revenue collection in about 10 or 5 years, lowest inflation, lowest uh, interest rates, best performing stock market in the South Asia, most stable currency, uh, highest G GDP growth in 11 years, 5.8 percent. I mean, it's, uh, it's all music. Your Western, uh, you know, the institutions had all the praise. And what was the final uh, report in 2016? PricewaterhouseCooper, what did it say? Pakistan is going to join G20 by 2030. Mm. And we were striving to bring it even earlier. And we were very clearly hoping that since we had ended the load shedding, we had uh, fought the extremism and terrorism in, in Pakistan, we had improved the macroeconomic, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, indicators in Pakistan and all praises, all. So now, you I, know, I, I, no, I understand. No, I'm not, I'm no, not no, suggesting no, that your no, personal no, economic no, record was bad. In some ways, no, it was no, good. No, but listen, I'm just no, trying I'm, to get uh, you to respond uh, to a simple no, question. To, Pakistan is where it is today. No, I, but, hang on. Okay. Imran Khan has a five year 
mandate. He won the election. He Now you not. have a choice. I you have a choice. Not. You can you can wait to fight the next election if you choose to go home, frankly, but at the moment you're still in London. You can either fight at the ballot box during the next election or you can try to undermine Imran Khan and his government from the sidelines from here in London and thereby create new economic and political instability. Is that the choice you uh, uh, no, made? No, it's not a matter of political instability. It's a matter of incompetence. It's a matter of uh, non-performance. It is a matter of uh, ruining and uh, you know grounding the economy of Pakistan in two years before Corona. Mind you, after 1952, Pakistan first time had seen negative GDP growth. After 1952. From 5.8 percent, first year 1.9 percent, this year 0.4 percent negative, and there is a massive unemployment. We pulled six percent people out of poverty. He has pushed back six, six, you know, six six percent people in the poverty line. He he promised to give 10 million jobs. He has made people unemployed 12 million, added to the unemployment numbers. I Pakistan's think Pakistan's in big trouble. I just wonder no. whether your approach is weakening Pakistan no. on the world no, stage. A, you uh, recently uh, tweeted. Hang on, hang on, hang on. You recently <laughs> tweeted a message yeah. saying that Imran Khan. And I'm going to quote your Will words. You please, please. Personified fascism. Now, Imran Khan, yeah. Imran Khan has stood up for Pakistan's interests in a very tough stand against India and Mr. Modi, which you Did well he? know. He yeah. has also. Yeah. Conducted uh, a foreign policy which sees deepening economic ties with China, which is precisely the same policy that you followed. He also is trying to use Pakistan's influence, it seems, to bring the Taliban to the peace table in Afghanistan. What is it about these policies that you think personifies fascism? Well, I, I think that uh, perhaps uh, you haven't studied or you haven't uh, uh, had the time to look into what uh, fascism he's doing. You, st you stand by that? Yeah, of you? course I do. I do. There is a fascist government in Pakistan as of now. You're trying to mobilize tens of thousands of people on the streets in different Pakistani cities, even when there's a COVID pandemic. Your message is that we must bring Imran Khan's government down by the middle of the year and have new elections. You haven't succeeded so far. What's your next move? Well, Mr. Sekar, I think you haven't seen Mr. Imran Khan during the same. You see, the PDM uh, gatherings started from 16th of October. You haven't yeah, seen yeah the democratic movement yeah, gatherings yeah, yes yeah. but you haven't seen in the same period in the last 6 weeks you haven't seen the the gatherings the large gatherings of mr imran khan himself the what, covid covid would not spread what is your next move well we uh, our ultimate aim and our ultimate goal is supremacy of uh, uh, democracy in pakistan the free and fair election which would be transparent and should be acceptable to the world observers and presumably as, the rule of law as the rule of law so will you go home to face the uh, yeah, rule of law of course i will rule of law and, and and transparency and you know the constitution has to be all institution has to work within the domain uh, which has been prescribed in the constitution islamic republic of pakistan i think we'll be very happy so right now when i tweeted i have no regret and it is the ground reality you know a prime minister who calls the director general of the federal investigation agency and gives him names and says go and uh, and arrest them I mean what sort of uh, you know governance this is Well we 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 have to end it there but I do thank you very much indeed for coming into the hard talk studio It's a pleasure Shagda thanks very much <laughs> It's a pleasure Thank you so much for watching our video please share with your friends and fellows on social media thank